Well, good afternoon. This is Esbera. I am going to narrate the story. In, in fact, it is uh, actually started like a story, and finally, we ended with a image retrieval using image analytic from its SCADA screen. Well, I dedicate this uh, presentation to my dear mom. <coughs> well, the saga started this this power cause. They had a very old 16 megawatt solar field generators. That was um, uh, quite a uh, distance away from the main power plant, the thermal power plant, the main power plant, and it was uh, generating power in isolation. It was a very old unit, 16 megawatt solar PV fields, and scattered about in around 20 acres land. Things was that because there was no monitoring device to know the life generation. So there was complete mismanagement there. The irradiation level means uh, how much solar energy is available for that day, for that moment was not available. So the comparison was not available. So how much generation, how much energy should have been generated out of how many, how much energy is available that was not known to the management. The maintenance strategy was ineffective, mostly that cleaning schedule, that uh, string management schedule, those are uh, very much ineffective because management was not having that real field uh, um, uh, data. Loss was daily, weekly, and every year it was cumulative. So that's how the whole uh, saga started. When I was contacted, I was told that uh, the 16 megawatt solar regenerating fields, they needed quite a few datas. Because the generation was completely by default, few supervisors were uh, commissioned there. They were running those power plants. They were managing those power plants. So in fact, generation was completely by default. The cleaning schedule, the angular adjustment, depending upon the solar irradiation of that field, which is again, varies seasonal, varies uh, as per the year also, but those are things completely at the mercy of those few <laughs> unconnected uh, contract employees. Therefore, the loss of efficiency was cumulative every year, and every year it was failing in the MOU target. So there was a demand for live data. This demand was for present generation means how much megawatt it is generating. Present irradiation means how much solar radiation available for harvesting. Suppose the solar generation available was 16 megawatt and the panels were cumulative generating 16 megawatt and it is perfectly all right generating 100%. But it was not the case. Neither the management was having the solar generation or the solar irradiation at their hand, nor they are having the present level of generation. At the end of the day, the export meter used to tell them how much energy was sent out through the grid system. So that again consists of the transformer losses, inverter losses, and everything. So they are completely in dark. When the system was installed, they had everything. There was a total data uploading system from the field, the data used to be uploaded using a dedicated line to BSNL. So that used to be uploaded at that time. After that, the contract ended and the things were not never maintained. So the base generation was completely at default. The communication medium was only through solar cellular phone because the field was completely among the, the couple of mines, open cast mines. There was a NASA, the state highway and a few mines colony in between. So through the uh, Google map, the distance was 4,550 meter, the crow line distance between a state highway and two mining colonies. They had a very old SCADA system running on two Windows XP PC. So when I was contacted, I thought that once the data, we can get the data, it was very easy to pull out the data. 
means uh, data if it is available in any form then it can be pulled up and transmitted to the receiver point but the things uh, uh, turned out to be that scada was very old and the warranty was uh, lost long before so no spare scada card was also not available see normally in the scada what happens every time if you scada card is available through which you can push data to the output of the scada terminal means you can either get a 4 to 20 milliampere or you can get a voltage also so that way uh, the other day we had a program there using that spare scada card we took out a few data but here that uh, old spare scada scada card was also not available so after talking to that engineer in charge i tried to install that capture to text uh, uh, software that's a windows based software if we can have that uh, software then on a particular zone of that scada uh, whatever digit is available there the text is available there you can take it out through a text file but he was also very much afraid of installing that program on that old computers so that also option turned out to be useless so only option left was image analytic i never did that image analytic program so after going through some of the write ups <laughs> we finally installed that scada scada is a supervisory control and data acquisition system it's very old system of collecting data managing data displaying data system below is the that scada screen on the scada screen upper date and all those things below there are six lines this is all the six lines those three datas are available that generation instant generation in megawatt solar insulation or air radiation available in megawatt or watt per meter square and the days cumulative generation in megawatt hour so one then four and then six this few data were essentially required by the management for taking a prompt decision so what we thought that we will capture a moderate quality image of this scada screen analyze the image to capture those three live data that instant generation instant irradiation and cumulative megawatt generation so we started with a python on a desktop with an usb webcam and the lora lora will be used at the last phase of that project while experimenting we found that there is a frozen database that is a neural network available for text detection this is called east that east text database is available if it can be connected with a network then it can help you to analyze image at a great speed so that's the advantage of east database and of course spy serial was used for converting the data into a serial terminal and thereby uploading the data to the uh, for collect for uh, for the remote receiver which is situated at the uh, power plant end that will carry that uh, information for that 4550 meter aerial distance so this is the scada screen most of the screen is occupied by the uh, by the analytics of this uh, solar fields and on top of the field this few data are essentially required by the management so these are all open source software and i'm sorry i had to do all these things on a linux terminal this can be done on windows terminal as well only thing you have to uh, look into the softwares like python then python minimal then pilo numpy all these softwares you have to install in the windows and in windows i think that's uh, will be easier by going to the search window and writing this uh, python or python minimal you will be able to install those things so those are the fear after updating that you have to install this image magic then you have to of course if, uh, install python 2.7 or python 3 then you have to install pilo then numpy numpy is for uh, playing with this uh, number arrays then py tesseract this is for uh, python analyzing text 
this tesseract ocr also you can install but finally i did not use it uh, this is also a very fantastic software you can play with this tesseract ocr later and of course we have to install open cv in python this uh, yeast efficient and accurate uh, screen text detection this is available from internet that link is available in the bfi site therefore you have to install, uh, download that uh, frozen database this frozen database is very uh, is around 85 megabyte long so it will take some time and if you are using ubuntu 18 then you may face some challenges for snaps this snap will not allow you to install softwares uh, if uh, some more uh, software is uh, being installed by the uh, by the computer on the background so you have to stop snaps then again restart it these are the last two commands are for calling the snap id and then stopping that snap software which may or may not interfere with your installation process so after installing this softwares what you have to do the deployment the deployment is uh, uh, fast what we do we we take out the image we take out the image the same uh, camera we use this is an usb camera the same screen we took the color image then we converted it into gray scale and after converting into gray scale we applied for that yeast frozen database for image analytic in the next screen i'll show you the schematic once the uh, uh, this after uh, after uh, implementing that after using that yeast uh, text database we will be finding that we used a probability screen and setting a probability output when we found that that uh, the text uh, process that threshold limit we selected those text at the text uh, hidden behind the images uh, because this is a proprietary item that uh, that screen was a proprietary thing for that power cause i uh, cannot show you that screen here how the exactly it happened but the process went in this fashion if you set up a book in front of the screen it will the image will convert it in the gray scale and it will print the, those words here in the same fashion the bill of materials consists of only these two uart transceivers 868 megahertz which is costing around 13 dollar to 16 dollar and this frequency band is a, varies from country to country you have to find out as per your country and the other one is a you need just one computer with this camera and additional open source softwares in the next screen i will show you how the the broad schematic is like this i have provided three softwares there one is for reading the text from an image one is that uh, this program using uh, taking a snapshot continuously analyzing it reading the text out sending it through the air using that lora qrt um, device and then again that taking that image that loop program i have provided and the third program i have provided for taking how your computer vision software is working so first is that image capture capture by using computer vision cv2 then after taking that image the image is converted to gray scale this is a special this is a uh, uh, separate class used by cv2 this is a very simple class there are a lot of classes available sub class available of cv2 so after putting it converting it into gray scale we pass it on as a in the frozen neural network okay uh, someone asked about the uh, uh, about the opportunities i'll i'll come back to that question later so then uh, this in the frozen network in the frozen network we applied that east neural network after 
after applying that neural network, we applied a sigmoid probability. Sigmoid probability is again a <coughs> in a in a style of doing that uh, artificial <coughs> this uh, uh, computer intelligent programming for getting out the probability. And for probability, mostly we use sigmoid probability, and then reconfigure that image to another image. In the program, you will find I called it ROI. And after that, I use this subclass function of pi tesseract. This is image to string. Once this is done, the string comes out. And after coming that, getting that string, we cut it into, into separated functions and then uploaded it using that lot. And again, you go back to the image capturing. To the image capturing. And finally, this pi tesseract image to string. This is a common Python function using pi tesseract we used. So this is the broad um, uh, way of uh, uh, doing this uh, uh, image of this uh, particular problem. And uh, this is the uh, uh, this is the VFI link. If you go go to this link we will find this uh, exactly this way i have narrated the whole thing. and the whole project is uh, lined up in this fashion only uh, now i will open the uh, remaining part or open the question answer session and before that uh, just a brief here in fact image analytic is duty work if then without putting any extra additional delay statement it took almost every 10 seconds for a core i3 grade old desktop. So to make it shorter, you have to use a i5 grade PC or computer. And again, during actual deployment, we found that uh, this cheap quality camera lighting creates an issue. But becomes clear during day hours, becomes unclear during night time. So with a good quality camera, the, the problem sorted out. We first run it from a desktop. Stop PC. Later we uh, moved it to a Raspberry. The software remains the same. The management was careful about losses and remedial measures and prompt actions. So every time when there was a loss in generation output, they could find out uh, what it is uh, losing and they could ask for cleaning of panels. The so success of this project is a testimony that using image processing and text detection can be gathered from many unthinkable propositions. So that was the a major byline of this to take out data from many unthinkable propositions. So that was the end of my presentation. I will ask for this question answer sessions. And if you see the EFI the output. Is it not a better option to call NumPy open CV as software library rather than a software? No, you have to use NumPy because the Trojan database that we have used, that neural network, that each database, it has got a huge, huge numbers. So to crunch those numbers, we have to use NumPy. We have to another, use NumPy. Okay. Another uh, one is uh, difference between frozen NN and normal NN. Frozen database means somebody has already worked on that uh, database. And he has uh, fine-tuned that database. And then he has uh, released it in the internet. And somebody can use that template for selecting his own image analysis. Hence, already the work is done by somebody else. It is just like a template. I am putting my image into that template. And I am finding out my output. So that's why it is called Frozen Database. That uh, Frozen database, uh, there is a software also for uh, by which you can see that uh, characters how they are listed there in that Frozen database. TBTXT, the Frozen database normally I used uh, is uh, having an extension of .tbpb. And uh, .tbtxt, there is a software in that you can, if you go there, you will find that all the stakes are defined there. The database is itself 80 plus megabyte uh, huge. In Python, you can uh, do that experiment uh, using that tesseract. Since using OpenCV, you collecting your image, then uh, releasing it in PyTesseract, 
you can read it but you will find that lot of images are not uh, being read properly be covered by the camera to capture the image is it not a good option to use some camera with 360 degree view such as surround view camera i have not done it but i think it can be done because i have seen that in a uh, uh, in a screen full text also it can detect and the panoramic view is uh, around 120 degree if the camera can zoom into the every field in a uh, equal uh, focal strength with same uh, degree of uh, depth it can be, it can be done there is no point that it cannot be done because it only analyze images <laughs> if it can see it can read even this uh, software can be used for reading that uh, that what is that road side uh, uh, the sign boards also i have seen it can read while motion also it can read it can go up to 40 14 feet per second speed in case if we need to read data from multiple screen in scada how to upgrade this solution and or is there is any way to do it well you have to do that by using hardware computing if you use one camera then put it on a servo swipe the screen take image one after another on the background you analyze it and read it or put as many cameras on the usb and put as many uh, background processing as you need as somebody asked for uh, uh, brief about opportunities uh, well uh, one way of doing is that uh, that number plate reading fast number plate reading you can do it uh, normally this can be used up in the what is that uh, rtos barriers you can read those numbers you can combine do it with speed analytic there you can catch those default drivers those who are speeding at uh, higher speed then you can use it for um, scanning the roads uh, that headings or what else uh, you can uh, use it apart from doing this uh, image analytic you apply your uh, what is that imagination you will find lot of lot of projects are available i am doing this project one for our safety purpose uh, in that uh, same power plant uh, i am going to use it for people who are not wearing ppes in the work field this will capture what it will do it will make an association of those ppes together human being with helmet with hand gloves the, it will create an association uh, if that person is found without those ppes then it will create a, an alarm there so that way it can be used on a, a real uh, work field what is the size of image in fact the uh, size of image i am using the text uh, therefore the size of image whatever it is 800 600 i am using you can go for 1280 960 960 but ultimately in the uh, neural network before applying it neural network its size is reduced Uh, i cannot recall i think it is uh, going to be reduced to a little less than 800 600 image size it is being reduced then it is being applied in the neural network yeah ai and ml also can be used to motion sensor capture image sensing and so on is it true i am using ai only neural network is nothing but artificial intelligence and again this is nothing but machine learning <laughs>